Hi everyone, and welcome to the Cecilia course. And in this first part, I'm going to be talking specifically about animation character proportions and sketching a gesture of the character. So here in Photoshop, I have the finished version of Cecilia, but there's a lot of thinking and backend work that goes into creating this final image. So as nice as you might be at your rendering skills, there's a lot of things that you have to think about that are, I would argue, more important to know. So I'm going to go ahead and make this smaller so we can do some gesture drawing. So you see with a lot of the big animation studios, all the characters that they create have some kind of a shaping to them and that's because all the characters are kind of inspired by shapes. And if you think about it, animated characters would be very hard to draw frame by frame if they had really intricate detailed looks to them. So when animation first started back in the day, you would try to simplify the features. And that's kind of carried over into the new age with 3D, but uh, obviously the lighting and the color has definitely improved like vastly over the years. But one thing that kind of remained the same is the actual proportions of the character. So on this new layer, I'm going to go ahead and kind of give you a brief about what you can do to kind of get in the mindset of creating animated characters. And in terms of the brushes that I'll be using throughout the course, I'll be using two of the basic brushes that you can download on Concept Cookie's brushes page, and that's the hard edge brush and the soft edge brush. And I'm going to keep it very basic to show you guys how you don't need a lot of texture brushes for this kind of a look. So to start off, I'm just going to grab my basic circle hard edge brush, but this one has shape dynamics turned on. So if you open your brush menu from your window, having my shape dynamics turned on gives me the ability to push harder on the tablet which will give me more of that uh, circumference of the circle. So I'm going to go ahead and put that aside again. And as I get started, the one thing that I'm going to keep reinforcing is the idea of integrating shapes into the characters themselves because the shapes say a lot about the characters. So for example, usually villainous characters are more associated with pointy angular shapes. And you see it a lot, especially with like the classic Disney villains, for example, of Jafar or Ursula, where they play off of having sharp angles represent the different facial features. And you want to play off of that. And it kind of gives a sense of who the character is without them even having to talk. And it's something that you'll kind of see more and more as you watch animated movies or watch any of the newer 3D animation movies. They still have that sense of playing with the shaping of the character. Now oftentimes the more heroic characters like in, the, in this case Cecilia will be our main character this will play with more soft features so more round so I'm going to be thinking more circular I'm going to be thinking of not having any sharp angles and if so they'll be very subtle. So when I start off Cecilia I'm going to start off with a simple circle and then I'll usually draw kind of a gesture of where she's looking and usually it's done with just a single line so if I was drawing her whole body I would probably draw a smaller circle so I can actually fit the character on the canvas here and then draw the S from there and that S is going to kind of guide your entire movement and flow of the character and the way that you're going to be drawing the, the eye flow and when I say eye flow it's the way that you want the viewer to look at your character. And that's usually done through an S pose. So what is typically said is the best poses are dynamic because they have an S flow to them. So that's where like there's angles and your eye doesn't have to go just straight down on a character. It almost adds more interest to them. So when I'm working on that, I have to be keeping that in mind. But since I'm only working on a bust, for this, I'm more focusing on the actual facial features and keeping everything in proportion with each other. So as I go ahead and work on Cecilia, the first thing that I'm going to do is lay out a, kind of an, a line that would go around our circle, making it now a sphere, and that represents our eye level line. And our eye level line kind of sets up the whole placement for the character, or at least for the facial features. So on this facial line, or on this eye line, I'm going to be drawing my eyes above that line, and then the nose below it. 
So no matter where the character is looking, and I probably should do more concise circles so it's easier to see. But if they were, if she was looking straight at us, I would probably place the line right about there, knowing that the nose would go under and eyes would go over. And then this kind of helps when you're placing the head in different angles, because it's really easy to draw a character's face when it's in front view or side profile. But if there was more of an angle to it, that's where it becomes a bit more tricky. So then that line kind of helps guide you on where you should place different facial features. And you'll get better and more comfortable to placing them the more you do it. So don't expect to be a master at it right away. I mean, this is something that I spent hours just practicing drawing references in different angles because you're not going to just get it right away. There's going to be something a little off, and it's good to practice. It really kind of forces you to look at it and kind of see, okay, the eyes don't look right there. What looks wrong about it? Is there an angle that you know I'm not feeling comfortable with? Why is that? And just work through it. And in this case, I have a very, very simple uh, angle. So it's just kind of like almost from the front view, almost three-quarter profile. And this is something that we're going to work off of. And actually, that eye level is a bit too downward. I'm going to lift her head up a bit. So I usually won't even start on the drawing, unless if I know I have a good sense of my angles and where she's going to be looking or even if it wasn't Cecilia. I even do this with a lot of my realism works. Um, just a bit different, but for the most part, I still start off with just drawing a circle and laying out the different features from that. So with our circle in place, I'm gonna go ahead and make new layers for this because uh, you can download the PSD and you can actually check out the different uh, layers if you wanna go ahead and do that. So from here, I'm gonna work off of that eye line. So pretty much the next thing is casting the side of the face down to the chin and then kind of bring that up into the rest of the face. Now this looks simple but I promise you it may take a few times to get used to because someone like me that only does realism for the most part this was something that was very tricky for me is just simplifying the face into pretty much just one general curve on one side and one general curve on the other side. And typically for males, you'll draw more of a chin indentation, kind of showing uh, more of those masculine features that are associated in animation. But for the most part, you can do this with these very simple lines. And the reason that this one is so important is because that indentation here is giving a clue that there is a cheekbone and that the eyes will be placed somewhat uh, beside that. And knowing where to place that indentation is really crucial. So then if they're looking up, you want to make sure that the cheekbone would be above the nose, maybe not that high on this little example, like there. But then if they were looking down, so let's say uh, quick sketch here, you want to make sure that the cheekbone would be definitely below the eye level. And it'll give that sense of correctly placed facial features. So making sure that that cheekbone indentation is in the right place is really crucial. So then normally I wouldn't even bother kind of filling in the rest of the head, but just to kind of show you how I'm kind of seeing the actual proportion of the head, because typically it's going to be covered with hair anyways. So I don't typically try to, you know, draw on something that I think would just be a waste of my time, but knowing where, the head would be shaped in case, let's say you have a bald character. It's just important, I guess, to know what the shape of the head would look like. And then after kind of figuring out where those lines would go, I would go straight to drawing the ear. Now the ear, I definitely try to simplify in the fact that it's not angular so much, but it's like soft curves. And if you can just keep that in mind while you're doing your ear, then you should be fine. And then just kind of know the the way an ear really is shaped. So having your hook and the Y and the bump and kind of simplifying those features into very soft curves. 
and you want to keep them almost quick. So you can see how I'm trying not to go too much in detail with the ear, the ear and just pretty much laying down the basics of the shapes of the ear. And then from there, I might do a quick indentation of where the scalp line is and where like the hair begins. And we're set. So then this gives me a good idea of where the different facial features will be placed. And then I can go inside of the actual head that we created, and I'll make a new layer alongside that, and start working on the internal facial features. So usually the first thing that I'll, I'll draw is the nose. And that's different for me because typically I start with the eyes when I do a realistic face but I've come to learn more and more how important the nose is in placing all of the facial features. Because wherever your nose is placed, the other features will be placed around that. So I've kind of begun drawing the nose first and then placing the other features around that. All right, so now I did a quick nose here and there's a lot of different ways you can do a nose. It can be rounded, it can be more pointy, but I'm doing a very basic soft but still somewhat triangular nose and the best way you can think of it is the top side will be lit and the bottom side will be in shadow so you can imagine like there's a triangle down here that'll be in shadow and then above that will be in light and you don't have to get too intricate with your nose either so like I keep saying you want to simplify your facial features so the nose is no different so I'm just gonna leave it just like that and then play off of where I'm going to place the rest of the facial features. Now for my eye line, I'm going to place the eye right on top of that line. And I think I made it just a little too high, but for the most part, my eye would generally land about here. And knowing where to place it just kind of goes through practice and looking at maybe not so much realism but other examples of animation work or even manga or whatever comic that you may be reading because they've done the practicing already they've already done the you know they've been through hours of placing the eyes and the facial features in the places that they're supposed to be so when i'm going through and doing this i'm going purely through memory and what i feel looks right and i think that's important for you guys to try as well because through practice is what's really going to nail down the knowing of where to place these. But for the most part, I'm going to place them on this line that we created and then work from there. And from here, you can work on um, just doing a simple outline of the iris and the pupil. So you can make them round, you can make them smaller, you can make them bigger. But for Cecilia, I'm going to give her kind of that wide-eyed, almost childlike expression look. So I'm going to make the irises rather large. And that's going to give her more of that cute look to her than if they were smaller, which would give more of a focused look. And sometimes that may even make them look older. So sometimes with the large eyes, you get that very cute sense to them. But you want to also be careful that you're not making them look too young if you're trying to make them look like a teenager because then you're balancing between keeping some of that youth look to it but also aging them just enough to look like they're an, almost an adult. But for Cecilia, I'm going to keep her younger. And I always saw her as kind of like 14-ish. So the way that I'm going to be placing the facial features is still very youthful, almost childlike. So then this is another one of those examples with the, the rather large eyes that kind of exemplify that. So another thing that is important that I should be doing more is flipping your image horizontally. And I have that set as a keyboard shortcut, but if you go to image at the top, image rotation, flip canvas horizontal, it really gives you a better look at how your proportions are working and if the facial features are looking accurate. So it actually doesn't look too bad from what I was kind of fearing it would. So I'm going to go ahead and just keep it in this view and continue working. But that's something that 
usually when I'm working, it's like every five minutes. And you just become kind of used to doing it. And I, I almost recommend setting up as a keyboard shortcut so you do it as well. All right, last but not least, the mouth. So then the way that I normally draw mouths on animated characters is I'll draw two points. So I'll draw one point where it's going to begin and one point where it's going to end. And I'll typically keep the middle a bit softer and then near the edges more defined, so more of the brush stroke. And maybe give her the end grin right there, and then a lip line. And even though I'm kind of doing more strokes than I should be, a lot of this could be done with like just a few strokes. But I think since I'm drawing it so big, I'm actually drawing more strokes than I need to on my tablet. So all this can be even simplified more. And it's just all through practice and getting comfortable with it. So if I continue to draw this character over and over, I would I should be a lot faster drawing it the like 200th time than I would the first time. And then from here, you can grab your lasso tool if you feel like something's maybe a bit out of proportion. And this is also a good um, point after you finish kind of the basic sketch. And I would recommend actually doing a few of them first because oftentimes the first one's not going to look quite as nice as the like the fifth one or the tenth one. But um, showing your work to someone and just getting feedback and let it not you know bring you down if they don't like it or if they're critiquing you, but know that they're trying to help you and they're seeing something that you weren't able to see. It's not that they're better than you, it's just that you've been looking at something for so long that they probably do have a fresh take an opinion on it that you just cannot have at the moment. All right, and lastly, I just kind of drew in the neck really quick, but I'm going to go ahead and explain the process so I'm not just showing you, I'm explaining. So the neck itself, I always imagine, is kind of holding that sphere up inside of the head. And depending on how thick the neck is, is also going to give some relation to the age of the character. So since I want to keep her relatively young, and she's a rather s slim character, so I'm going to keep the neck pretty thin, but I'm going to have it coming off of the base of that circle. And then from there, this is where I'm just doing the basic clothes that she's wearing. So it's like this baker gown that she has, and the apron kind of wraps around it. So then from this angle, it almost looks like the facial features are a bit too sunken in. And what I can do really quick is just grab the nose and the mouth and pull them forward. And I'm basing that off of the head position and angle and also the way that the, the jawline, how it meets that cheekbone and where I, I believe it should be in relation with the rest of the facial features. So even here, I feel like the eye should be closer to the edge. Something more like that. And then I also tend to notice that the mouth of an animated character at least when drawn, sometimes appears to be more on one side than the other. And that's more to express express uh, their expressions, and sometimes it's easier to see when you have the mouth leaning toward the side that is more in the view of the camera. And then lastly, you know, you, you could just do a quick scribble for the hair. And originally she was going to have this really long, uh, curly kind of playful hair type to her, but during one of my preliminary sketches, I just cut it all off, and it felt really like, it almost felt like I was cutting off a lot of 
the pressure and the look of the character, and this kind of gave it a fresh new take, and that was kind of the direction I really liked, so I kind of ran with it, and this is what we ended up with. So when working with the hair, I'm just keeping it very loose. I'm trying not to be too defined with the way that I'm placing the hair, but you can also see how I'm still playing with the shapes. So the shaping of the hair is, it's very circular, but then at the end, it almost cuts off to a solid point. And through that, I'm still adding in integrating shapes, which is something that is like just so crucial, and I'm going to keep reiterating throughout this entire course. All right. So if I hide those initial sketches that we did, you can kind of see how our character is starting to come together. And you'll also notice that we have something kind of crucial missing, and that's the eyebrow and the upper eyelid. So this is actually a really crucial part, not just the eyebrows, but the upper eyelid, because I've seen that the way that these are placed gives a lot of emotion, and the eyebrows almost just emphasize that. So what I mean by the upper eyelid is there's just a little line that animators will usually draw in right above the eye and this will say a lot about the character so if it's more scowled it'll almost give more of a mean expression or if it's worried or concerned it'll have somewhat of a curve to it but for her since I'm going for a very relaxed look to her in general I'm just gonna pull those lines pulling back across her eye and that's just kind of giving the carefree, not really worried look to her. And then in terms of the eyebrow, I'm just going to emphasize that and then raise this one to give her somewhat of an expression. Because otherwise it'd be pretty blank if I played them in the same area. And I actually feel like the forehead could be raised to show off more of that. Like that. Now, like I said, this is something that you'll probably be sketching a lot smaller and a lot quicker, but definitely keep in mind what you're drawing. So don't just go into autopilot mode where you're drawing what you're already comfortable with. Really think about the placement of everything you're placing and is it making sense in relation with the rest of the character. And then don't feel intimidated by being able to manipulate it afterwards. So like right there, I just made it a bit wider because it felt a bit squished and that just feels more natural to me. So never feel like you can't edit your sketches because that's when you get into the mode of you're trying to protect your image and like it can't be changed or edited, but it's so early on in the, in the sketching phase that it's that's something that shouldn't even be phasing you at this point. You should be able to feel confident enough to edit it as much as you like until you get to kind of the detailing point and we're not nowhere near that at this point we're still in like the sketching phase and like a good example is I think the head may look not quite on top of that neck it looks like there's just slightly off angle so I'm gonna go ahead and just select the neck and place it where I feel most comfortable with and then you can see the difference if I go control Z and you can see how, yeah, that does look a bit better. And it took all of, like, you know, not even 10 seconds to edit. So when you're in the preliminary stages, don't feel afraid to edit and have fun with it. But always be concentrating on what you're doing. So this is the tutorial on animation proportions and sketching. And in the next tutorial, we're going to take a look at creating the classic look, which is a two-tone color scheme and then coloring the outline. And that's with more traditional animation but then after that tutorial, that's when we'll take it into the rendering of a character that looks like it's more realized in 3D. So catch you in the next one.